Hi, everybody. We're back live from San Francisco, the EMC V-Specs announcement. Uh, we've heard a lot today about choice, about flexibility. Um, it's, a, it's a definitely an expansion of that converged infrastructure play for EMC. We, of course, VCE got it all started off in 2009 with uh, V-Block, which was a lot of choice as long as you wanted it in black. And um, today it's all about really uh, uh, expanding the choices in terms of server uh, uh, vendors that you can pop in, hypervisor, uh, we see Citrix here, we see networking uh, flexibility, uh, and we're here with, in a big, big, big channel emphasis today, of course, it's a 100% channel product uh, and solution, and we're here with two members of the channel, Scott Look is the VP of Enterprise Storage at Avnet, and Al Chin is the VP of Sales and Marketing at, at Dasher, which is a, a reseller. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. So, SiliconAngle.tv, we go out, we cover all the events, and we try to bring in people who really understand the business and extract knowledge from them and share it with our community. So. Uh, as I said in my little monologue up front, this is really a big channel emphasis. You guys are all about the channel. It's been amazing, Scott, to look at how important the channel has become in the last 10 years and how companies like EMC and NetApp and HP and others, IBM as well, have really embraced the channel. Um, what's changed there and why has the channel become such an important factor? Well, I think that uh, over time, that you know, the suppliers are all realizing that the way to get to uh, the scope and scalability of what they need um, to achieve their goals is through the channel, and they can't continue to invest in direct selling organizations and, and things along those lines. So I would, uh, you know, uh, I would com compliment Greg Ambulos, who's who's been doing this for 10 years now at, at EMC, and um, uh, I've worked with him all all of those 10 years, and and the progress that EMC has made in the channel and the commitment to the channel and now with channel only products and, and uh, the V specs uh, in, in other colors than black as you, as you said yeah. is, is a true testament to not only uh, Greg but um, Bill Tuber, Joe Tucci and, the, and Billy Scannell, the whole management team. They've just done a great job over the last number of years. I mean, let's face it, EMC hasn't always been a channel friendly company. I mean, it's done, it's done some head fakes and I have no problem saying that. I've been observing EMC for decades and uh, a big, you know, meat-eating direct sales force, still have a meat-eating direct sales force, but I think realizing, as you pointed out, Scott, that they can get a lot more productivity by working with the channel. Um, so, Al, I'm interested in, you, so your relationship with, with Avnet, you're the reseller, uh, you're the, the, the point of contact with the customer, right? right? Exactly. So you're adding a lot of value. I'm interested in, I, I, we heard the, the panel this morning talking about the cloud, and everybody's very positive on the cloud, and the, how can you not be positive on the cloud? It's a big trend, the trend is your friend. At the same time, as a reseller, the cloud is somewhat a threat to you in terms of, you've got to change to adopt to the cloud. Um, if everybody buys from Amazon, well, what does that mean for you? So, how are you changing your business to accommodate that trend? So what I think we've done pretty effectively over the last couple of years is anticipate those customers that are moving away from Amazon. They've become disenfranchised, they may have realized now that they're paying way too much money for what they're getting, and they want to start managing their own infrastructure. It's not ideal for them, but in many cases, it is a conscious decision to pull away from a OpEx perspective and move into a CapEx model. They may still need a hosted uh, relationship or a managed service somewhere. What this now offers them is the best of, best of both worlds. They can move off of the Amazon Play and manage their own infrastructure and truly own it and do with it what they want to have done. It's not a shared resource, they actually own it themselves. Yeah, so I mean, Amazon is alluring, right? Because it's, oh yeah, great, I can outsource it, but it's expensive. I it mean, is very expensive um, I, you know, and unwieldy. What do you mean by that? It, it's not flexible. Um, mm. the, the customers typically don't get a say on what platform they get to run their infrastructure on or what the utilization might be. They can turn it up and turn it down as needed, but they don't know what the hardware is going to be. This, the, there's a very definitive definition of what this will be running on. So you're building, so we've, as a small company, faced that same thing. We used to, we went to Amazon, and said, wow, this is really expensive. <laughs> and so we, we started looking at hybrids. We do some backups on S3, and maybe, you know, are you seeing that same thing? Are you seeing sort of that hybrid cloud, or is it really more focused on the private right now? Um, I, I, I think all three universes exist right now. There is private, there is public, there is hybrid. Most customers are somewhere along their journey right now. Smaller ones are going to be definitely more in the public cloud because that's what's convenient. Uh, it's, it's purely a cosplay and how do I get ramped up and get resources quickly. Um, larger companies are probably in the hybrid mode. They've got um, utility models out there or they need extra 
uh, utilization that they don't necessarily want to pay for because they think it's a short-term need. Um, and then you've got the commercial or mid-market companies that are now moving away from an Amazon play and into their own private cloud. So I'm interested in the whole value chain of how um, the channel catalyzed this announcement because when VBlock first came out, I know a lot of channel partners said, you know, we're going to do our own. You know, we don't want to go for that single schema. We're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, maybe a different server. We don't want UCS, whatever it was. And the EMC obviously responded uh, 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 to that. Scott, what, what have you seen change in the last like, two years since the VBlock announcement you know, came about, and how important is this notion of, of choice and channel only to you and your channel partners? I think the uh, converged infrastructure certainly has become a, little, a lot more mainstream than it was in the past over the last couple of years. So VBlock came out, and then there were uh, other uh, suppliers that came out with other solutions. Um, there continues to be um, uh, additional offerings out there. They're all kind of going towards that um, uh, converged infrastructure that, um, that allows for some flexibility, although some, uh, some of the vendors, unlike the way EMC built up this VSpec thing, is, is more um, independent on, on, on all of their products. Um, and so it, it's, um, it's been progressing regularly over the last couple of years towards this more of a total solution, solve the customer's end user problem with a converged infrastructure, with a focus around the cloud, whether it's public or private or hybrid. Um, and um, you're probably going to see a lot more of it. Well, I mean, you guys are you're driving a lot of it, right? I mean, you have huge market power. Um, you're moving a lot of, of, of equipment. Um, and you'll actually do some of your own innovations, right? I mean, you guys will, will, will actually build single SKU in cases where the vendor might not. And yeah. so um, that's different for Avnet, isn't it? I mean, you know. um, Not necessarily, no. We've been uh, part of our, our heritage in, 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 in one of our other operating groups is really to have single SKU, total solution, uh, build it from the ground up kind of um, uh, methodology. We're, um, we're, we're utilizing and capitalizing those skills internally with our integration center and using those engineering forces to be able to do proof of concept builds um, and come up with a uh, single SKU solution that we can take it from uh, quote from the quote all the way through the uh, integration and in some cases we can follow it out and do the implementation services. So we, we will continue to do that and we plan on doing that with the VSpecs. So Al, I'm interested from your perspective, again, one step closer to the customer, you've got the spectrum of um, you can have uh, integration and simplicity and the other end of the spectrum, spectrum is choice. And sort of Jeremy put that spectrum up today Yep. and then said, hey, there's something in the middle. Um, which is sort of proven choice. Uh, how do you help c clients understand which way to go? Or what are they telling you? So the fact that this is a reference architecture and is tested, robust, and proven out will mean the world to customers. This is what they're looking for as they are moving away from the, cloud, uh, the public cloud uh, operation. Uh, as they move into a private cloud, they want to know that this is bulletproof. When you cobble something together yourself, as many customers do when they first initially move off of Amazon, IT is not really their business. Delivering a product is their business. Most of, you know, if you look at San Francisco, there's a lot of SaaS companies, and this is a means to an end, the IT piece of it, but it's not really what they want to do. Um, this will allow them that flexibility to pick and choose the devices and the products that they want and still have a reference architecture that EMC is standing behind. So you're putting a scenario forth where, where customers maybe started, go to Amazon, and then now sort of being forced to manage their own private clouds. There's another scenario too, which is, and I wonder if you've seen this, the business line is then running IT, doing a reach around, starting a project, maybe doing a public cloud with Amazon, and then realizing, ah, oh, this is expensive, it's hard to manage, it's maybe not secure, Amazon goes down, I gotta pay a lot for their you know, platinum level SLA, and they go back to IT and say to the CIO, can you help me? Right. So are you seeing that, they're bringing that back in? Okay. Absolutely. So now yeah. they're saying that converged infrastructure gives them the ability not to be integrators, but to be sort of what somebody earlier called cloud brokers. Yeah, so now your VP of uh, IT and your CIO can regain the control and s strip away that shadow IT that exists and get it under one house, one total infrastructure. 
How, let's talk about services a little bit. Uh, Silicon Angle launched a site called servicesangle.com uh, last year. And um, we at uh, Wikibon just did a study on converged infrastructure. It's a huge market. I mean, it's absolutely, the TAM we, we calculated by 2017 is going to be $400 billion. And I said earlier, somebody might have said, what are you, crazy, Dave Vellante, $400 billion? But if you think about it, it's all the servers, all the networking, all the storage, all the infrastructure management software, and the services. And the services is the biggest piece, almost half of the pie is, is services. So Scott, where do, where do your services leave off? And Al, where do yours pick up? And what kind of services are customers asking for as it relates to converged infrastructure? So one of the things that, that Avnet has been doing as we're building out our services offering and our services business is we really look at uh, the need of the reseller partners. Our intent isn't to uh, do services without our reseller partners. So in an, in an effort to help them build out reseller uh, services to make them more effective at the end user site or where they don't have those resources and they can outsource those resources to us. That's really our play in the supply chain of this. Um, and um, when, um, uh, again, if, if the reseller doesn't have it or um, doesn't have the capabilities in a specific city or something along those lines, then we'll have specific services that they could outsource to us to, to help them out. And so how, those services, how are they branded? Are they Avnet services? Are they Dasher services? Are they a, 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 a hybrid? Um, I, would, I would say a hybrid. In most cases, if, if in this instance Al wanted us to do an implementation down in uh, uh, Phoenix, then it would most likely be us going in on behalf of Dasher, and we would be Dasher badged, if you will, right. um, instead of Avnet, because Avnet isn't a... Uh, uh, a big brand at the end user site, right? Very large company, but we're kind of like a BASF, the BASF commercials, right? Yeah, right. We're kind of we're we're the guy behind the scene, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's and that's what we like to do. So it's not about us creating a brand at an end user site. It's more about supporting our reseller partners and how they want us to go represent that. So that's very clear dividing line from a, a branding standpoint. And now, sure. does any of that ever come back to the vendor? Let me you know, EMC Global Services or other, some of their competitors where you're actually bringing some of their services through that, that channel. Does that, does that happen? Um, or, is it, or are you pretty much on your own to develop your own services portfolio? No, there are, there are other, other um, uh, vendors and, and, and with EMC, um, we're actually having conversations with them about uh, helping out from a scalability standpoint on some of the lower end um, service offerings so we can go out and uh, be that uh, integration implementation uh, person so they don't have to build out their store or their uh, services organization. Well, they're in an interesting spot right now, right, because, you know, their CEO says we're not going to compete with our services partners, but at the same time, service is a great business for them. They're growing like crazy. It's a huge opportunity. So they, I think they're walking a fine line. My prediction would be you'll see, you know, EMC get much more into that business and start maybe doing things like you've seen some others do with, with, with branding, but we'll see. Um, so anyway, the services remain, I mean, despite the fact that converged infrastructure is all about this simplicity, why is it that services are still required? I mean, that's sort of an obvious question, but maybe Al, you could take us through that. Well, it is a complex solution. It, it, it's not quite as easy as, you know, just throwing the box over the wall. It does need to be spec'd out. It does need to fit the customer's application and get integrated into their holistic solution. So. Um, this should make things a lot easier, quite honestly. Um, that is the hope, and that is kind of what we're betting on. I want to talk about the branding a little bit, um, come back to that. I was at the IBM announcement yesterday. IBM had a big converged infrastructure announcement, and you know, IBM, impressive company, right? They got a lot of capabilities, and, and, and they did it right. But I asked Steve Mills, who basically runs that whole hardware and software business, what, how, you, how are you branding this thing, and how can the channel participate in that branding? Said, the brand's IBM, that's the brand. Today we heard a different message, and we had Jeremy Burton on, and Jeremy was saying, you know, we want to share that brand with the channel. How important is that to you to see, you know, your name or your names up on that box? Um, is it a nice to have, a need to have, or you don't care? Well, from, from a, a launch perspective and just the visibility, it was, it was great to see our name up there. Um, when you get down to uh, practicality or, or reality, Avnet isn't going to um, brand the V specs. That that is more for the dashers of the world to put their brand on there. So it was it was cool to see, but it's probably the only time we'll see it, and we certainly <laughs> won't see it in any data center. But I think it's really important from a partnership standpoint, uh, uh, from a reseller. Now you could comment on this, but I think uh, having their name there associated with that and building their brand in the data center um, is is there's a lot of value in that. 
it is about credibility, right? And the truth of the matter is, Dasher doesn't have a big brand or a big presence. Um, you know, we're a good sized company, but you know, we pale in comparison to EMC. And uh, let's not forget who the big logo is on the box. But if you can be associated with that and give the customer a great experience based on what you've done and the solution that you've delivered, it's never a bad thing. Well, uh, my colleague John Furrier would, is always telling me, when you're talking to channel guys, talk about how they make money, because that's really what drives these guys. So talk about converged infrastructure and the, 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 the economic opportunity that it brings. Maybe, Scott, we start with you, and, and Al, you know, take it through. That's really my last question. Okay. Um, again, uh, the old uh, cliche, there's uh, margin in the mystery, and, and when you bring the converge, converge infrastructure together, um, it's, it's, it's not easy to, uh, for, for an end user to to uh, cobble all of this product together and get the same outcome as we could with a Dasher building out um, a total solution and taking it into their integrations or into their data center and uh, doing the implementation aspect of it. So I think um, from a profitability standpoint, um, there is uh, the opportunity of uh, the, the total solution and the total solution including the services aspect of it and so as, as resellers and dashers and, and even us balance out our portfolios around hardware, software, and, and services, um, it's certainly going to be able to help with the profitability um, in the supply chain. And so it really is the, the, the services. We come back to services. It's the biggest piece of the pie. Is that, and, and, and Al, is that you know, planning design, you know, consulting planning design, implementation, management? You know, yes, 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 yes. I mean, talk yes, about yes, that. yes, yes, yes. And this all comes back down to efficiencies and simplicity. So if it takes a customer four weeks to cobble their solution together on their own versus having us do it as a professional service, you know, in the traditional sense, which might take two weeks, or rolling this in in a week, they're going to re their return on investment is going to be that much faster. There's value in integration. Actually, I do have one more question. So what do you tell the customer who says, yeah, I really like this idea of converged infrastructure, but I'm afraid that I'm going to lose pricing power. And so I'm just going to go with the roll your own, and I'm going to go through that nightmare of, 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 of rolling, it all, uh, it rolling it all up. Do you hear that, and what do you tell those guys? You know, we, we do, um, and it's our job to help educate them on what those efficiencies are and what can be gained versus just the bottom line on an acquisition cost. If they can turn up the system that much faster, know that it's bulletproof day one, and that it's gonna run for three years, there, there are definitely gains there. Excellent, all right, Scott and Al, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, we're out of time. Appreciate you guys coming on, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks, and, uh, thank you. And uh, keep it right there, everybody, we will be back after this uh, brief break. And uh, no, we're not gonna leave? Yeah, we're gonna take more than a brief break. So about a 15 minute break, uh, we're going to run a few programs that we have, and we'll see you right back here live from San Francisco. This is SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of the EMC vSpecs announcement. Keep it right there. Great. Thanks, Dave.